So my preconditions, I had the addiction that I wasn't getting on the other side of. I, I had my sexual orientation as a, as a gay kid growing up in a small Catholic town in Kansas. I, I was troubled. Uh, this was not my first attempt. This was my third in the seventh grade and also my junior year of high school that I had hidden from other people but nearly ended my life as too many teenagers today do. And I was struggling with depression, brought on somewhat by the experience of 9-11 a year and a half before, my mother's death a few months before, and the slip with drinking. So then I had the precipitating factors. So I got my third DUI in May of 2003, again, in the small town that I had grown up in, Kansas. I had the foreclosure proceedings, which were, were barking at my gate, and I had that final slip with cocaine while in New York City. And so the combination of those lightning flashes and the way my life was, the likelihood of that dark night of the soul, the likelihood of stepping into uh, the suicide um, was really, really high. Now, the New York Post had a, a short article, really short article about my attempt, where the, the headline was, Deranged Middle-Aged Man, middle -aged man Leaps from Bridge. It's like, middle-aged? Really? <laughs> That's what they thought of me? And, and I, I, I recognized in that, in that time in Bellevue Hospital, like if I was gonna get on the other side of this, I had to, I had to live life really differently. So I want to talk about the short-term, the medium-term, and the long-term steps that I took that helped me, and we called this the bridge back to life. Um, I'm slowly working on a memoir um, that, that that's the, the working title, The Bridge Back to Life, One Man's Journey from the Edge of Death to the Center of Life. And, and I want to talk about that journey. Short-term, this team of professionals who swooped in around me, my family who swooped in around me, and letters and cards that came from people from all over, most of whom I knew, some of whom I didn't. But, but in, that, in those first few weeks and months, I was really blessed. In the medium term, and we'll call this like the first year or so, um, was really pivotal to me. In the rooms of recovery, I learned the definition of the word surrender the military definition, the recovery definition of surrender. It doesn't mean giving up. It doesn't mean throwing in the towel or admitting defeat. Surrender means going over to the winning side. When someone surrenders, they actually put themselves in the care of those who are winning. And I, that was a new insight to me. And so I had to live my life from a sense of surrender.